do we need an inquiry like the Senate inquiry into Britain's involvement? We are in actually Portland? at the moment conducting such an inquiry. Uh, the, uh, this was a Senate committee, a congressional committee in the United States. Uh, the Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament, which I chair, has for the last three, four months been uh, analysing the evidence. We have five uh, members of our staff full-time who have been working on that. That, is, that work is already taking place. We've already had the Gibson report, of course. In, in well, the Gibson report was stopped before it was finished uh, because Gibson said he could not continue because of the uh, police inquiries uh, into the Bell Hodge case. So that is, it was at that stage that the Prime Minister asked whether the Intelligence and Security Committee would be willing to take on board this responsibility and we said yes but only if we have the staff we require and to when, do it when can we expect to see that or will indeed we ever see it oh, you'll definitely see it and it won't uh, be a question of years but it can't be very very soon first of all the work is a very very intensive amount of work uh, the senate uh, report we've been hearing about took six years to produce uh, i would hope uh, that uh, the work will be produced during the course of 2015 that's the objective but we have a particular problem because of the interruption of the general election the, so that is bound to have a delaying impact. Indeed. I mean, the suspicion is that basically British intelligence was piggybacking on the back of American activities, which the Americans now accept were wrong. Well, I, I don't want to prejudge what the report will, our own inquiries will reveal, um, but I think you've got to be very clear what the allegations against the United Kingdom have been from some quarters. Uh, in the United States, it's about uh, CIA officials torturing their detainees. Uh, there's virtually no suggestion that British uh, intelligence was actually physically involved in torturing people. That's very, very important. There's two kinds of allegation that is being made. First of all, that uh, people in MI6 or in our intelligence agencies were aware of the kind of treatment that detainees were getting and were willing to benefit from the information that was obtained in that way, so that in some way they were complicit. Uh, the other uh, allegation, very serious allegation, is that in the case of Mr. Bell Hadge and another gentleman, that these uh, two guys were uh, rendered that we were involved Libya, with rendition, and that we were directly, that our intelligence agencies were directly involved in the rendition of these two men to Libya. That's a very serious allegation. What is your view? Did inquiry. the use of these enhanced intelligence techniques? This seems to be the big argument in America. Sure. Did they result in intelligence which protected the security? Well, and I, I and the United Kingdom as a whole have always taken the view, certainly in the, for the last 30, 40, 50 years, uh, that torture just is not only ethically repugnant but doesn't deliver because you can never rely on the accuracy of the information that's being given by someone who's being subject to torture at the time. So it has been banned in the United Kingdom for many, many years. Uh, and we have no sympathy with that kind of approach. And I personally welcome, as did uh, most people in Britain, President Obama's decision uh, to make sure that cannot happen again in the United States. I mean, one of the things that's come out from this report is that one of the key pieces of evidence about Saddam Hussein having weapons yeah. of mass destruction came from someone who was tortured well, and, just he, shows and the, he was lying. Yeah, that just shows the unreliability of it. Because if you get information, first of all, a person being interrogated, even without torture, can give false information. He can try and mislead the people who are interrogating him. He's even more likely to come up with whatever he thinks may please the interrogators if he's actually being suffer subject to torture at the time. The idea that torture makes you tell the truth rather than just say whatever you think might stop the torture is, is, is pretty obvious. And will this fall within the remit of uh, the Chilcot inquiry as well into Iraq? Any of uh, I, the Chilcot inquiry have completed all their evidence. They have actually completed their report. The fact that it hasn't been published yet is because of various legal procedures that are required before that is possible. They're not, so far as I'm aware, reopening any of their inquiry. What about the, the, the impact of this in the United States? Because there's some people, I mean, we've had Dick Cheney describe the report yes. as crap, others saying that all it's done is undermine well, I, the I think CIA. the tragedy is that the Senate's report, of course, was only a majority report. It was a Democrat's on the With committee. some Republicans. No, well, virtually none, yeah. virtually none. The, the Republicans produced a minority report. Now, in the case of the, uh, the Intelligence Security Committee in Britain, we are an all-party committee, as is the Senate, but we have a history of complete bipartisanship and I can give you one absolute yes. assurance, our conclusions will be the conclusions of the whole committee. I mean, do you blame the Republicans for that, for being partisan? I have read their minority report, and it's very interesting because it, most of the time it's just complaining about the methodology and the process. They don't actually say they supported uh, these well, waterboarding and the various other methods that were used. And uh, I'm reassured that they don't say that because it would be a pretty indefensible position for them to adopt.
One of the complaints we keep on hearing is that although a lot of documents were gone through, no yeah. CIA officers were interviewed. Was that a mistake? Well, that was for the Senate to decide their own processes. I can't comment on why they did that. I suspect it was the, own, the internal differences within their committee between Democrats and Republicans that precluded it, but uh, that's a question they'll have to answer. Finally, the big, big question, does this, the tone of the debate in America, what you're doing here, does this mean never again? It's very, very important. The allegation we're looking into is whether the United Kingdom intelligence yeah. agencies were somehow indirectly complicit sure. by being aware it was happening and benefiting from information that seemed to have been obtained. Now, we have, over the last few years, and I see we, successive British governments, both the last government and the present one, have introduced a very, very strong compliance code uh, that the agencies have accepted, and that means that kind of behavior cannot be repeated. And by the Americans? Well, I'm pretty certain in the United States that the political pressure there to do something comparable is, will be overwhelming and unbelievable.